good morning so in today's session we are going to study about the architecture of umts or our 3d networks so as we have discussed earlier that umts has been an evolved technology from the first generation from the second generation and then we have finally reached to our third generation of cellular systems so that means the architecture of the CMTS or the 3G networks has also been a process of evolution from our GSM to 3G networks. So basically architecture of any network comprises of different radio configurations that is the radio equipments. When these radio equipments are configured properly then we get a network in a fully properly working mode. So Today, we will be discussing the radio access network part of the UMTS architecture. Now, architecture comprises of telecom network and management network now this telecom network is basically responsible for providing connectivity between two different endpoints that is the transfer of information from one device to another whereas the management network is responsible for invoicing pricing etc to check whether the network is working properly or not but here we are only concerned with this telecom network which is responsible for providing the connectivity across two different nodes that is the flow of information between two connected nodes so we will be here discussing this telecommunication network for our 3g systems now in the previous sessions, we just discussed the brief that the UMTS network is divided into two different parts. Yet, it is an evolution of GSM architecture, but the two entities of UMTS architecture are Radio Access Network and another one is the Core Network or backbone network so this ran on the cn totally comprises the complete architecture of our 3g systems now this ran refers to radio access network and we know that CN or the back backbone network is the core network for our 3G systems. Now users are able to access the services of this core network with the help of radio access network. So firstly, we will be studying about this radio access network and then we will move towards the core network of 3G systems. First thing we are studying here, RAN, radio access network. This radio access network is mainly responsible for deploying the radio access technology so the radio access technology in case of UMTS is WCDMA so we will study that what are the different constituents of our radio access network 
But firstly, we will see that how this network has evolved from the previous GSM network. Now, if we have our 2G GSM network, if we have a look on this, so the components which it has are like the mobile equipment, then it has the BTS, which is base station transceiver. After that, the next component in our second generation system is the BSC. BSC is our base station controller. And then we have MSC, which is the mobile switching center. Now this mobile switching center has various databases and registers attached to it. Now this is the configuration of the different radio equipments in the GSM network. Now if we talk about the GSM, the third generation network, which is the EMGS, it simply has user equipment. This is like our mobile equipment and the GSM network. Then we have node B in 3G systems. This is like the BTS of our 2G systems. Then we have RNC, radio network controller, like our BS. Now, after this, where the changes lie in our UMTS network? In the UMTS network, core network is divided into two parts. All this user equipment node B RNC. This is our radio access network. Then we have the core network. The core network is connected to this portion with the help of RNC. Now this has further circuit switch domain and the packet switch domain. Now this is further connected to our PLMN network and packet switch domain is connected to our internet. So here we simply have this flow like mobile equipment, BTS, PSC, MSC, but in our UMTS network we have user equipment, node B, RNC and the core network is broadly divided into two different categories. So now firstly we will be discussing about the constituents of the radio access network. I'll simply draw here the radio access network components. Firstly, we have the user equipment, then we have node B. Node B is connected to RNC and RNC is further connected to our core network but this is mainly our radio access network so we will be discussing about these different constituents of the radio access network. Now we know that radio access network is responsible for deploying our access technology that is WCDMA technology here. So the first component which lies in radio access network is our user equipment. UE 
refers to user equipment now this user equipment has two units with it that is me plus user me is our mobile equipment and this is our umts sim so firstly the mobile equipment now the mobile equipment is basically our handset which is a portable handheld device and this is a radio terminal which is used for the transmission and reception of your call so that means the mobile equipment is the radio terminal which is held responsible for getting connected to our network now this mobile equipment has different constituents with it also like RF, circuitry, that is the radio frequency circuitry which is held responsible for the signalings which help us in the transmission and receptions and other functions like the amplification of the signals. So RF circuitry within the mobile equipment is responsible for these operations. We all know Mobile equipments incorporate batteries within themselves. Now, the third important component for our user equipment terminal is the UMTS SIM. This is our UMTS SIM. Now, SIM refers to subscriber identity module when we talk about like our gsm services we are very much aware of this term sim card so here if we are using the 3g services so that smart card is referred as the umts sim so this umts sim card is basically a smart card which holds the identification related parameters of the subscriber that is when a user has to get connected to the network it contains all the parameters which are required for the validation and authentication of the user so that means our sim card contains authentication keys which are required for the authenticity of the user when he is trying to register to the network. So that means this UMTS SIM is an identity which is individual to every subscriber who is using the services of a particular network. He is identified on the basis of this identity on this particular number. Every user has a different identification number attached to its SIM card. So a user is able to connect to a network only if he is using the subscriber identity module, a smart card, which is held responsible for connecting to the network in order to access the services of the network. So after the user equipment, the next component is our node B. Now this node B is similar to BTS of 2G systems. Now, if we see the scenario, user equipment, node B, RNC and the further network. So that means node B is acting as an intermediary between the user equipment and the further network. So that means this terminal, this node B is responsible for connecting the user to the further network. So that means it acts as an intermediary for user equipment and of a complete 3G system. So this node B is responsible for implementing the
error interface between the user equipment and itself that is the node b that is it node b is responsible for the processing of error interface now we know that in this portion of our access technology that is wcdma is implemented so that means our node b is responsible for implementing either of the vmts mode whether tdd mode or fdd mode and this is responsible for helping the user equipment to communicate in the cell n to the further network node b is also held responsible for spreading operation as we know that the access technology is wcdm that is code division multiple access so that means we have to spread our information with the code so it is responsible for spreading the information further node b also performs scrambling operations so all the activities which are related for the air interface processing that is done by our node b which is similar to our base trans receiver station in the gsm network so that means the basic functionality of this unit is the transmission and reception of the information after that it also sends measurement reports to rnc measurement reports are the power measurement reports for the user equipment and for the station which are being transmitted by node b to rnc further functionalities of node b are like power control handovers ATM switching. So these are the different functionalities of our node B. So that means this is a crucial element of our network because this is the element which is connecting the user to the further following network. If the user want to access the services of complete network, the user has to register itself to the node B. It's serving base station. Now node b after that is further connected to another unit which is rnc now this rnc stands for radio network controller now, as the name implies, radio network controller. So that means RNC is the governing element of the UTRAM. RNC is a major element of the radio access network of 3G systems. Now, its functionality is similar to BSC in your 2G systems. BSC is our base station controller. Now, there it is referred as radio network controller. Now, the prime functionality of this radio network controller is to control the node Bs. There can be different number of node Bs which are connected to RNC. So, RNC is held responsible for controlling the number of node Bs attached to it. So, that means our radio network controller is held responsible for RRM also which is radio resource management so that means if the radio resources are to be provided to the user equipment so that management is done by rnc then they are forwarded to the node b and then finally to the user so our rnc is held for responsible for providing these resources to the subscriber further our radio network controller 
is also held responsible for employing some important protocols for our GMTS network. So the different protocols which are implemented here are like RRC which refers to radio resource control. Now this radio resource control is responsible for the connection setup, connection establishment and the release of the connection. So all these protocols are implemented and checked by our radio network controller. Further it is also responsible for another protocol that is radio access bearer. Now this access bearer is responsible for the transportation of the signal across the network and further there are all uh, different functionalities of radio network controller like admission control it checks the admission control for various subscriber who are using the networks this is basically a validation check that whether the resources which are provided to the equipment are enough or not so this is responsible for such kind of controls further our radio network control is also responsible for checking the congestion in the network so this is referred as the congestion control another important uh, functionalities of radio con network controller are like our implementation of IU protocols that is how the network is then further connected to our core network because RNC is the device here which will be now acting as intermediary between these and the further core network. RNC is connected to our circuit switch domain also and RNC is connected to the packet switch domain also. So these are the different constituents of our radio access network like our user equipment connected to node B, which node B is responsible for implementing the air interface and different functionalities of the processing of the air interface like spreading, scrambling, power control, etc. Then our node B is connected to RNC, radio network controller, which is the governing element of this radio access network. That is, RNC is responsible for controlling all the node Bs which are attached to it. So that means this is the head for all of the node Bs which are working under it. So this is just the radio access network of the GMTS network. Now there are different interfaces of these equipments also. Now what does this interface refer to? Next thing is RAN interfaces. Now interface basically refers to the logical connection between two devices. If there is one component and there is another component, so that means when they are connected, they follow an interface between them. So now we will discuss about the various interfaces in our radio access network. As the first component is user equipment, it has mobile equipment and universal EMTS SIM. So there is an interface between these two components also. That interface is referred as CPU interface. Now this interface is just an electrical interface between the mobile equipment and your SIM card. So when these interfaces, both of these devices are connected together, only then they will work as a portable and working user equipment 
terminal. So the interface between your mobile equipment and your SIM card is the CU interface, which is our electrical interface. Now after user equipment, we have node B. Now the interface between these two components, the user equipment and the node B is, we know that air interface and the naming convention for this interface is referred as QU interface. Now, the next following component is RNC. Node B is connected to RNC. So, this is IQB interface. The naming convention for the interface between Node B and RNC is IUB interface. Now, RNCs can be connected to each other. So, the interface between one RNC and another RNC is your IQR interface. So, these are the different interfaces which come under our radio access network. User equipment to node B, node B to RNC. And we know that RNC is then further connected to our core network. So this is just all about the radio access network of our UMTS network. This radio access network of UMTS is referred as UTRAN also. Universal Terrestrial Radio Access Network. So uh, this is all about the radio access network of the UMTS network. In the next session, we will be discussing about the core network, the backbone network of the 3G systems in detail. Thank you.